Doing a quick video update on some projects that I've been working on. Um, one of the major things that's happened uh, with uh, these projects is that I am moving away from using Unity and I'm going to start using Unreal Engine 4. And <clears throat> there's several reason, reasons why I'm doing this. Uh, one of them is that it's turning out that the Unity, uh, I'm sorry, the Unreal Engine is much more powerful than Unity right now. And some of my earlier projects, you will have noticed that I'm dealing with uh, moving characters around, uh, following paths, uh, and things like that. And in just a short uh, couple of weeks, I was able to uh, learn enough about Unity, I'm sorry, Unreal, that uh, I just said, I'm just not going to deal with Unity for advanced uh, graphics uh, projects. Uh, what you're looking at here is Unreal Engine 4, uh, 4.23. And something that I have put together uh, in the last, you know, week or so, uh, just part time. And one thing with Unreal is that it's got it has um, behavior trees built in. So the zombies right now that are running around uh, are basically. Uh, using this behavior tree and uh, you just saw this uh, vehicle driving around <laughs> that's on a spline it's following a spline around this neighborhood and the the graphics fidelity is just phenomenal uh, compared to what uh, I have been able to get with unity uh, I'm sure with unity if you spent a huge amount of time you could get the graphics to look like something like this but I just don't have the time to invest in that uh, I need the graphics to be uh, real-time and uh, almost uh, photo realistic and as we can see here we've got some craziness uh, going on uh, so also with this project um, I can't necessarily give out the uh, source code <laughs> because the uh, map, the Unreal map that uh, you see here with all these houses, I had to pay $75 for the assets. So that's one thing with uh, Unreal is that they, uh, you know, some of these assets they want money for. But I did that because of other projects that I'm working on as well so you're seeing this neighborhood environment this is actually uh, my project that I have in Unreal and uh, I, I loaded in those assets I'll show you something real quick here with the behavior trees this is something that I was stalling out on uh, using un. Uh, Unity because it doesn't have this ability uh, built in and this is just a very simple behavior tree that the zombies are connected to and uh, I just went online and looked at some examples and I could get something working now uh, it not only has uh, uh, behavior trees but it uses uh, what they call a node-based uh, programming language which is um, uh, really fascinating. So uh, I'll open up the zombie character. I got, I got the uh, assets for free. And then I went online and started learning how to use this uh, graphical node-based uh, programming language. And it's, it's just light years ahead of what I uh, could get done uh, with uh, Unity. Uh, some eventually Unity will catch up and it will be uh, at par with Unreal but for right now I need 
uh, objects to move around in kind of an AI fashion and uh, just can't uh, you'd have to code all this in you know C sharp in or, or buy a plugin in unity uh, unity has uh, their uh, shader graph node based environment and uh, so does um, unreal but uh, Unreal just took it to the uh, the next level. Uh, I'm still uh, a, a junior uh, level at this. The the other thing you can do with Unreal is you can write plugins for it, and the underlying language that you can use, uh, and you can use uh, the blueprints to communicate to is C++. So uh, these uh, this type of environment. At first, uh, I thought it was kind of a joke with Unreal, but um, it's not. It's serious, and, and I need to move on. Anyway, speaking of moving on, uh, the, the other thing that we're doing here uh, is something called uh, AirSim. Uh, okay, wow. So this is the, the Epic launcher, and... Uh, it just came up for some reason. Some of the uh, some of the examples I have right now are just unbelievable. Uh, I'll get back to AirSim in a minute. Uh, Air, uh, well, uh, I guess I'll talk about it now. AirSim gives you the ability to uh, connect into Unreal with Python, uh, among other things, and. Uh, that's extremely powerful uh, for me and there's some uh, environments here that I've downloaded for free that uh, could use the uh, AirSim plugin. It's turning out the AirSim uh, that Microsoft's develop it. It's kind of a pain in the ass to get it integrated and I don't have it completely integrated into my projects. Uh, but what they do give you is they give you pre-compiled projects that you can use and we'll uh, I don't know why that's doing that it's losing its mind so uh, do this right here so this now we're going to talk a little bit about AirSim uh, as it is related to Unreal uh, they're working on it to where it will work in uh, Unity. I don't really care uh, simply because of the uh, the image quality uh, in Unreal. So, okay, now we're talking about AirSim right now. You can download it uh, online uh, uh, from Microsoft and uh, you have to get kind of serious about uh, building things in C++, uh, being able to build the engine or the plugin. But you can see right here with their, uh, and you can go to this site, you can see their demos. And uh, this is how people can get started with either drone uh, footage, uh, running through an environment. Uh, here's one of them. Uh, this is AirSim uh, plugged into the uh, pre-compiled environment that, uh, and as you can see, it's this neighborhood. Now, you don't get these resources, you just get the executable, but you can control the um, drone and or you can control the car uh, externally. And that's uh, how we potentially uh, hook it up to um, uh, TensorFlow and uh, Keras and things like that. So when I saw this, I said, "Okay, I'm gonna I'm going with uh, uh, you know Unreal right now." Uh, there's a couple other projects that uh, people are interested in that I've talked to that uh, want to do drone surveillance and or uh, drone you know uh, finding you know people and uh, you know in hurricanes and disasters and things like that. And Unreal is 
you know, it's just the way that it's going to have to happen. So, okay, rambling. So one of the things I worked on was uh, getting the, the code, uh, pulling, you could pull down uh, the AirSim projects that are already compiled uh, and you can use the uh, Python code to connect up to them. And uh, this is a modification of mine. I'm basically uh, loading this neighborhood air sim executable and I'm connecting up to it and they go over uh, how to do this I'm just automating uh, the process uh, right now this particular piece of code doesn't have uh, any uh, model control in it yet uh, from either Keras or TensorFlow I do have examples that uh, use uh, TensorFlow uh, but they're very simple and they're very simple models and I want to do uh, obviously my own uh, Unreal environment with my own neighborhood uh, that's what you uh, previously uh, saw uh, in the earlier part of the the video so when I run this what it's going to do is it's going to execute the pre-compiled neighborhood AirSim environment it's going to drop a car in there and then right now all I'm going to be able to do is through Python uh, tell the car to move forward and move backwards so let's get this working so it's going to execute it's going to come up and it's just going to kind of sit there so here's this neighborhood it's ex almost the exact same one that I've got and uh, the difference is, is we're controlling it with uh, Python. So let me see, uh, go over here. Uh, connection confused, uh, refused. This is, oh, it says it connected. Okay, let's see what happens. Okay, so here's the throttle. I'm uh, kind of hitting the keys, and as you can see, boom, it crashes. And it uh, send AirSim is sending the information back, and you might be like, "Well, who cares about this?" Well, um, if you are going to train uh, self-driving uh, uh, car models, this is the kind of environment that you might want to do it in—in in a simulated environment uh, and with almost uh, photorealistic uh, images. You you can pull these images across uh, into Python and then you can uh, run them against a, a model. Let's do this. So uh, I'm setting up a Keras environment uh, to do this and I don't have as you can see I've got some air some street data that I recorded and here you go. So you can start using these to train your model uh, relatively simply. So if we back out, here is a TensorFlow example that uh, was uh, almost identical. And here's the AirSim executable. And this is where I started getting uh, the idea from. Now, I'm not a uh, TensorFlow fan. Uh, I, I am, but I'm not. I prefer to use Keras, which runs on top of TensorFlow, and it makes it a lot easier to uh, pull in and train models. But you can basically see uh, in the Python code, it's almost identical. And, and this, uh, I think this comes from, this is part of the, it might not be part of the AirSim uh, but they're using the the code and you can see in uh, tensor I, I basically trained this model uh, and ran this demo and it it doesn't have some of the code that I've got but you can see in here to where they're basically uh, controlling the car there's the brake car controls uh, they're running the prediction and you know this is you know using uh, TensorFlow. I'll probably, uh, I haven't got there yet uh, with Keras. I have to retrain the model, but you have to retrain the model, and that's why I wanted to be in control of my uh, own environment to get the uh, 
potentially get the test data uh, from my neighborhood and my Unreal project. So that's the difference is that you in this you don't have any control of what's going on uh, because this is a pre-compiled uh, neighborhood example and you can't take these executables apart and, and try to get the the neighborhood data uh, that's uh, not the way you do it and that's you know you need to obviously you know help these people out and pay them so um, the uh, when you saw in the other uh, Unreal environments that I had in the uh, IDE, the the Unreal Launcher, you can get free you can get free models, and uh, one of them was uh, the an old abandoned um, uh, you know warehouse, and as long as you can. Uh, in the next videos I put out, follow me on this journey, uh, be able to get the latest air sim and, um, you know, have it uh, roam around and bump into things. I think this is another one. Uh, yeah, this is uh, a drone. This is a deep learning example uh, that I pulled down as well. Uh, and uh, this guy. Uh, the DRL with TL Sim. So there's a bunch of people out uh, uh, out and about that are doing this, and it's really fascinating. And it's something that uh, I just cannot do with Unre uh, Unity right now. I just don't have the time uh, uh, to spend on trying to get uh, Unity to do the photorealistic uh, stuff. So I, I know I keep blabbing about that. Anyway. This is, uh, I, I don't have a lot of projects that on the uh, my site that deal with the machine learning and AI, but I've got tons and tons of them that uh, I've uh, worked on and I'm getting ready to uh, post some videos on this stuff. Uh, the the inter software integration of a lot of these projects is kind of steep. Uh, like I said, uh, I'm still kind of running into uh, issues with AirSim uh, that uh, it doesn't it doesn't work with my version of 4.23 uh, of Unreal. I've got to figure that out, and uh, you know sometimes that's typical Microsoft. Uh, you you have to really know what's going on. Uh, there's another version uh, that I've been uh, using uh, that it, it's not air sim it's a watered down version called unreal uh, CV computer vision uh, let's see if I can pull that guy up it's not in there and okay yeah unreal projects uh, this Unreal CV project, uh, it does it does work. I can connect uh, to uh, the my Unreal project and um, move the camera around. So Unreal CV is another example. It's not as advanced as AirSim, uh, but maybe that's okay. I might be using the Unreal CV project uh, to do the exact same thing I'm trying to do in uh, using AirSim but I'll have to recreate a lot of the uh, you know the car control and the potentially the drone control so anyway uh, blabbing on here uh, I figured I'd post this video and uh, to get people up to speed with the latest and greatest projects but the biggest takeaway is that I'm gonna uh, get out of the get away from uh, unity for a little bit and uh, if you guys want to follow along I would strongly suggest uh, looking into getting up to speed speed with unreal and quite frankly it's really a kick-ass you know obviously game development environment anyway um, that's all I know for now. Uh, leave a like. 
you know, comment below on, you know, projects that you guys, you know, might be interested in seeing.